topic of this video is the Tektron 2 computer vision demo brought to you by Blackmagic AI. So if you want to know more about us, go to blackmagicai.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, sign up on our email list, or like us on Facebook. In this video, we demonstrate Facebook the Tektron 2 algorithm and run sample code in a Google Collaboratory notebook to apply object detection, instant segmentation, and panoptic segmentation to sample images and video. Now we'll explain the meaning of these terms as we run the sample code, so let's get started. All right, the Tektron 2 Vision API, what is it? Well, the Tektron 2 is Facebook AI Research's next generation library that provides state-of-the-art detection and segmentation algorithms. So if you wanna read more about it, uh, you can check out this link that references the original Detectron 2 GitHub repo documentation. Now the topics covered in this video, we will open a Google Collaboratory notebook based on the original Detectron 2 notebook and run the sample code. Then we're going to import a short video clip and we're going to apply Detectron 2 to the video and export the process video with the annotated segmentation data. Well, the first step is open a browser tab and in the address bar, let's go to blackmagicai.com. And remember, this is the launching point uh, for all things Blackmagic AI. So we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and that gives you all our social media links, but we're gonna click on the GitHub repo icon. So let's click on that at the bottom of the page. And that's gonna open our Blackmagic AI GitHub repo repository. So let's click on the repositories and we want to click on the Detectron 2 demo. So let's click on that one and then we're going to click on notebooks, expand that and then we're going to select the Detectron 2 tutorial demo. And recall that uh, GitHub gives us a preview of our Colab notebook but to actually run the code, we need to click on the Open in Colab button. So let's click on that next. All right, now we are in our Google Collaboratory Notebook. So here's some documentation. And once again, this is a modified version of the original Detectron 2 tutorial notebook. Only in this version, uh, we removed the train on a custom data set section. And this one only focuses on object detection, segmentation, and panoptic segmentation on images and video clips. But if you want to go to the original one, you can click on this Detectron 2 GitHub repo link here. All right, so let's start at the beginning. And once again, uh, we can open our table of contents and jump directly to particular sections in our notebook. So we're going to start at the beginning here. Let's run the code in our first cell. So this first cell, uh, Detectron 2 is based on PyTorch. So we'll have to load that and, and that will include the Detectron 2 library in our environment. So let's select that first. All right, yes, we wanna run that. And the installation will take a while. So take a quick little break. Okay, so now our installation of PyTorch and the Detectron 2 library is finally complete. Uh, so now we can move on to the next cell. So we can see, make sure everything checks out okay. All right, so now let's move on to the next cell. So the next cell is just gonna check our PyTorch installation and it'll print any messages if something's not correct. So let's run that. All right, so this is all true. If you get this, that means everything's good and we can move on to the next cell. Now the next cell is going to uh, import all the libraries for us. So it's going to import some NumPy stuff, the Detectron 2 library itself, and some additional uh, components within the Detectron 2 library. So let's run that cell. All right, next thing we want to do is uh, let's import a sample image. So there's a link here that's gonna get a sample image from the uh, Coco data set. This has a lot of images you can use for uh, testing out your computer vision code. So we are going to import that and then it's gonna display it. So this is like a typical image you'll find in that Coco data set. Uh, so we have a guy riding a horse and then a background, uh, people on the sidewalk with umbrellas. So that's our images imported. So the next cell, we're gonna create our config object that's 
the Tektron 2 needs to uh, perform its algorithm. Now this first uh, demo, we're going to do object detection. So we're going to show how the Tektron 2 can be used for object detection. So if you want to see how we perform object detection in previous videos, we have a tiny YOLO 3 object detection video, and we also have a Google Cloud Vision API object detection video. So you can check those out for other ways um, you can do object detection. But this video is all about Detectron 2. If you look at the lines of code here, we're gonna use our config object to load object detection models. This is from the model zoo. The so model zoo just has a collection of different types of um, AI computer vision modules that we can use for our computer vision projects. This one is an object detection model. So let's run this uh, cell to load that. All right, so that took about 12 seconds to complete, so it looks like that's done. Running that cell created a predictor object for us. Now that predictor object is what we will use to pass in our sample image that we downloaded in the previous cell, and then it's gonna run our object detection on that, and then we're gonna show the image with the annotated object detection data. Let's run this cell. And you can see the results of our object detection. So it detected the horse, the person and then the people and the uh, background on the sidewalk there. So even some people like hiding behind trees, it detected those with 98% uh, confidence. You can see that's a pretty good that's pretty good results for this Detectron 2 for object detection. Well, now let's go on to instance segmentation. Instance segmentation. That's where we care about detection and segmentation of the instances of the objects separately. In other words, we perform segmentation only on the objects detected within the bounding box of object detection. Imagine we have the bounding box and then we categorize all the pixels for that detected object into one group. For example, this bounding box which contains the person or the horse, we can find all the pixels that belong to that category. For example, we can find all the pixels that belong to the horse, we can find all the pixels that belong to the person, and also the detection of people in the background. And that's only within the bounding box, so we don't care about anything else in the scene. Once again, we'll have to load another model from the model zoo. So this is the model for instance segmentation. Let's run that one, complete our config. That completed. Let's go to the next cell. So once again, we have a predictor object. We're gonna pass in the image, but this time it's gonna be running the instance segmentation model that we loaded in the previous cell. So let's run that. So you can see the results with instance segmentation. So we got the bounding box as we did before in object detection, but now within that bounding box, we have all the pixels that belong to that object. So for example, each person in the background, we know all the pixels that belong to that one. We know all the pixels that in that bounding box that belong to the horse, etc. If your project needs that level of detail in the object detected in an image, then you want to use instance segmentation. Now there's another thing we can do called panoptic segmentation. Panoptic segmentation combines semantic and instant segmentation such that all pixels are assigned a class label and all object instances are uniquely segmented. Panoptic segmentation, it classifies all pixels in the image within a polygonal bounding area, including objects and the background scenery. Unlike object and instance segmentation, which only care about individual objects in the image. Now we're gonna classify and detect all the objects in the image, including background imagery. And once again, we have loads a model from our model zoo into our config object. So we're gonna load the panoptic segmentation model this time. Let's run that. We will get a predictor that we can use. Now we have a predictor object. This time we're going to run the prediction on the same image, but now it's using the panoptic segmentation model. Let's run that. All right, and here are the results. You can see we've identified the road as dirt. Uh, we have the fence. Uh, we have the background trees identified, all the pixels related to that. This is an even higher level of detail and information and metadata about the image. So let's continue on with panoptic segmentation. In this next demo, we're gonna load some sample video. So this video is just an iStock photo video. You can upload your own image. For now, we're just gonna use a sample one. So let's run this cell and it'll grab that uh, video and it should put it in our local collaboratory file system. So let's check on our local collaboratory file system 
And let's see. Oh, well, we have to connect to our runtime. So let's do that. Connect to host of runtime. Now you see a video that we downloaded. This is a short video clip of driving in traffic down a street in Washington, DC. In this next uh, cell, it loads our video, sample video. So if you upload your own video, you want to change the name here on line two and line nine to the name of the video that you uploaded. What this cell does, it's gonna read that uh, video file and then it's going to read it frame by frame and perform a panoptic segmentation on each frame and then it's going to take that frame and write it out to a new output file with the annotated uh, segmentation data. Now there's a couple things in here to note. Um, we're going to view the full segmentation of the image but there's some code in here that if you want to uncomment it you can uh, do additional things. An optional thing to do is if you only want to show uh, the segmentation image and not the original image that the uh, segmentation is applied to then uh, you can uncomment this code and then comment out 19. Uh, another thing you can do is if you only want to filter out specific segments, for example, uh, if you only want to filter out the automobiles, you can look up the category ID, uncomment this code and place it here. Or if you want to just look at uh, like get the segmentation for the roads, the dirt or something like that, then uncomment this and then comment out 19. And once again, this could take a while, so we're just going to get it started and then we're going to take a little break and we'll come back later and see the results. Okay, after about eight minutes of processing our video, it's finally complete. And that was a 25 second video clip, so that's about the time it's going to take. So for 25 seconds of video clip, we had eight minutes of processing time to get our final output video, which you see here. So we had the input video, which is DC street. And then the output is dc-street-out. What I want to do is uh, download that. So I'm going to download the uh, final annotated video. That way we can view the input and output and compare the results we get with the panoptic segmentation on the video clip. And now let's look at the output of the video we processed using the Detectron 2 panoptic segmentation uh, code in our Google Collaboratory notebook. Now, as you can see from the side-by-side -side comparison, on the uh, left, we have the original image, and on the right, we have the uh, processed image where we ran it through the panoptic segmentation. So you can see it identifies the road, it's identifying buildings, trees, the traffic light there it identified, uh, people and pedestrians and trucks and vehicles. We can see we can get a lot more information out of our images and videos using this panoptic segmentation. And this is just a demo video, but we have some other cool projects we're going to develop using uh, this Detectron 2 uh, synoptic segmentation library. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified when those uh, videos are posted. And that concludes this video, so go to blackmagicai.com, like us on Facebook, sign up on our email list, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.